First question on today's episode, a question from subs came from my guy Sebastian. He said, man, I don't know why some Ravens fans say that the slot cornerback position is unknown when the Ravens are making it pretty clear that Kyle Hamilton will be playing it again by their moves this offseason. So let's see what he's talking about. He said, number one, they tried to sign Adrian Amos. Number two, they paid Geno Stones. Number three, Harp said that Brandon Stevens will be playing more safety this season. All these moves are way before they signed cornerback Rock Yassin. Mm, that's a uh, that's some good uh, good points because yeah, that's them adding safeties or in trying to add safety. They wanted to sign Adrian Amos, but then when Chuck Clark went down because he had visited Baltimore for two times, and the second time was like a big secret. But um, they uh they tried to sign him, so I guess they wanted another safety over top because maybe that does mean that they will not try to fix what's not broken with Kyle Hamilton because they did have him in sort of in that slot nickel role last year, so that could be what it, they're foretelling. Then yeah, they did bring back Geno Stone, uh, on a I think a one year deal, and yeah, like you mentioned, Hobbs just say Brandon Stevens is gonna be playing a lot of safety again this year, so it seemed like they're gonna have some people roaming back there. And maybe keep Super Duper Kyle where he was at last year. I wouldn't have a problem with that because it worked. It worked. He got more and more comfortable as the year went on. So I wouldn't be mad at all if they did that. You made some really, really good points. He said, my question is, what do you think is more of a need this season? Pass rusher or slot cornerback? And if you could snatch anyone from any team at that position, who would it be? Mm. Uh, so pass rusher or slot cornerback? Um. Mm. Hmm, I would probably say pass rusher uh, because right now it's a lot of unknown. I mean, so there's some unknown at cornerback too, but I'd say it's more unknown at the pass rush role because we have David Ajabo and he's expected to be really good, but we got to still see it. He was obviously really good in college, but we got to see it on the NFL level consistently. Um, with Adafi away, we still don't know about him yet. And yeah, so it's pretty, uh, pretty a lot of question marks there. Pretty unknown there. Um, so I would say pass rusher because, again, if you have a pass rusher, a good, great pass rush, then that helps make it easier for everybody behind him. It helps make it easier for the cornerbacks, for the safeties, for everybody. Um, so I, I would say pass rush. And if I could get snatch anyone from any team at that position at cornerback, um, hmm, for cornerback, i probably do pass Sertan, um, the second. Uh, as far as pass rusher, uh, I will probably do T.J. Watt. All right, and he said, take care. Keep the great discussions coming. I'm overseas where football is not that big, so it's like uh, having a friend from far away. Hey, team, keep it clean. We're not just friends. We're all family, man, so I appreciate this. Now, something else that I appreciate is hearing a word from our sponsor. And now a word from our sponsor, Morgan & Morgan. While we're watching the games, we see these football players flying across the field at full speed trying to make plays for their team. But an unfortunate part of that process is injuries. But they're professionals, so when they get hurt, they know exactly where to go to. They know exactly who to call. They know exactly who to reach out to if something happens. But not all of us are professionals, so we don't know. And sometimes even if we do know, it can be a little bit intimidating. But it shouldn't be. With Morgan & Morgan, submitting an injury claim is easy. Morgan & Morgan has modernized the injury law process, so you can submit a claim and have it reviewed by a lawyer without ever having to leave the couch. So when you think about it, you could actually do it while you're watching a football game. You can sign documents, upload pictures, share medical records, and doctor bills all from your cell phone. And I know since y'all have way more important stuff to do, like watching a football game, you don't want to be on the phone all day and all night with the attorney. But with Morgan & Morgan, you can actually text your attorney or your legal team throughout the duration of your case. So if you have an injured in an accident, hiring an attorney is one of the first things that you need to take care of. And with Morgan & Morgan, submitting a claim is so easy. More than 3 million people have trusted Morgan & Morgan when they were in an accident. So if you're ever in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less, all from your phone. And you can have America's largest injury firm fighting for you. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. So Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs where you can ask any question that you want to. If you want to be a part of it, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids and shout out 
to our newest team keep it clean patron my guy caleb and this is his question now he said my opinion on the offense and defense hey engraven hope you and the family have been doing well i had a thought come to mind that i never thought about over the past few years we have had a great defense while having a not so good wide receiver Oh, you, you ain't thought about that? I mean, we, we talked about that a lot of times, but it's all good. Anyway, so a lot of Ravens fans are complaining that we don't have good corners or edge rushers, but at the end of the day, it's really hard to have a great offense and a great defense at the same time. Look at other teams. The Chiefs have an amazing offense, but a not so good defense. Bengals have a good offense, but a not so good defense. Bills have a great offense, but their corners always struggle. I would say the only team that has a great offense and defense is the 49ers and Eagles, but the 49ers have a quarterback problem. Just injuries, really. Injuries. Uh, when you talked about the Bills as far as their cornerback struggling, injuries. Um, Chiefs, yeah, they do have an amazing offense. Their defense is opportunistic uh, because their offense puts so much pressure uh, on opposing teams. Like, it's, it's hard to keep up. You can't keep up with the Chiefs. So, that makes it easy for their defense to hold it down. So, and with the Bengals, yeah, they, they got a really good offense. Their defense has been good too now. But anyway. Since the Ravens now have upgraded their wide receiver court and got that group settled out, they don't have the money to acquire what they want for edge rushers and corners. Uh, our Ravens finally stopped spending all their money on defense, like we said, and started spending it on offense. We need to understand that. So, um, yeah, they did uh, sort of change the game a bit. But remember, they, they still spend some money on defense now. Don't forget, like. Obviously, with offense, they're going to make them more money. Like a Lamar Jackson, Odell Beckham Jr. got paid big time. Ronnie Stanley still on a big contract. Mark Andrews, he got paid. But defense still got paid too now. Like, we, I mean, Marcus Peters, he just left. He had gotten paid. But Roquan Smith, look at Roquan Smith. Look at Marlon Humphrey. Look at Marcus Williams last year. So, Ravens, it ain't like they ain't been paying defense. They, they still been taking care of that. But um, I'm glad to see that they put a lot more emphasis on the offense this year because that was well needed. Special kind of question today because this package came from my guy Justin in Ohio. And he sent some Baltimore Ravens signature cards. So, Justin, I appreciate this a lot. And he not only sent a, a, like a lot of cards, which I appreciate, he also hand wrote his question so this special right here i, I appreciate this a lot because this is different man this is a a, a, a a different level of love man so i appreciate this a lot man he said um engraving my man i figured uh, it was about time to send you some more cards this time i put a lamar rookie card and two autograph rookie cards appreciate everything you do for the fan base so here's something for you and carter hey now nah, I, I appreciate that especially about carter I always um always appreciate extra uh, when people always look out for Carter. So thank you for that. I appreciate that a lot, man. He said, I have never been so confident in a, Raven, in a Ravens rookie ever. Uh, months before the draft, I was going nuts over Zay Flowers uh, prior to us drafting him. Whether we drafted him or not, I was and am on the Zay Flowers train. I was buying up all his autographed rookie cards even before the Ravens got him. So you could imagine my excitement the day we secured our franchise QB and Zay Flowers. I truly believe Zay will be our first Pro Bowl wide receiver. Uh, and that he will be a household name, not only in Baltimore, but all over the country. Ooh, that's some... All right, now. Hey, ain't going to be mad if that happens. Because, I mean, it's time, right? It will make sense. He said, thank you for everything you do. Uh, what do you believe Zay Flowers will do for Baltimore? And P.S. My wife Heather says hello. and She loves your intro song. Believe me, she hears it every day. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. Um, what will Zay Flowers do for Baltimore? What will he do for the Ravens? Um, just open things up, open things up for everybody else. Wow. When he gets the ball, creating his own, uh, big plays too. Zay Flowers is exciting to think about because you think about the possibilities. You think about what it could be. You think about what it should be. Uh, you think about what already is as far as Mark Andrews established guy with Rashad Bateman. We kind of, kind of know him. We still got some more to learn about him. Odell Beckham Jr. established guy too. Um, but then Nelson Aguilar, he could be in the mix too. Devin Duvernay, but then you throw in Zay Flowers as well. And it's just another playmaker. But probably, he'll probably be, be the shiftiest guy on a team. Yeah, he'll probably be the shiftiest guy on the team now. And he got good speed, good hands. And again, you can never have enough playmakers. And Ravens, I think, it took him a while. You know, we've been trying to let them know for the longest, but it took him a while to be here. But now they have some more legitimate playmakers and a, a lot of it was play calling as well so it's a mix of things executed it's a mix of a lot of stuff um but now it seems like ravens are finally 
uh, turning the corner when it comes to that offense. And Zay Flowers could be a big part of that. Next question came from Charlotte. She said, Hello, Engraving. I found your channel during the plague or COVID and have been following you ever since. Hey, that's COVID was crazy, man. That, and that's a pretty good way to put it. The, the plague yeah uh but she said i'm probably old enough to be your grandmother but i'm a diehard ravens fan i like uh your keep kept clean content uh as, and you don't get as crazy as some of the other hosts I, I appreciate it i appreciate you watching too uh here's hoping you can answer these questions number one what is your take on art model not already being in the hall of fame he has done a lot for football media wise and after all uh the other teams have moved around this should not be held against him see with, with the nfl with the hall of fame I feel like the Hall of Fame, the voters and stuff, they are a very sensitive bunch. So you could have all the, the, the statistics and whatnot to prove like, hey, I belong here. I should be here. But if you did something that made them mad, if you did something that really ticked them off, then they will keep you out of the Hall of Fame for a while. Even if you're supposed to be there, even if all the numbers say, hey, you need to be there. Like I think about Ocho Cinco, Chad Johnson. I think about Terrell Owens, guys like that. Their pers they had big personalities, which I appreciated, but NFL, NFL Hall of Fame, but they don't appreciate that. So I think that could be a big part of what it is. So number two, have you looked at into Baltimore uh, Lightning uh, in the GDFL? Uh, this season, they have worked with the Ravens on promotions and also participated in team workouts with them. No, no, I haven't, haven't looked at that uh, at all. Um, I'm naive to that. And then she said number three. What is your opinion on the drip? I get the styling part of some of the players and that times change. Personally, I still hold the opinion that if you're going to your official business meeting, you should dress accordingly, like in a suit. Uh, thanks for reading. I see you on YouTube. I appreciate it. Uh, and she said, well, the, as far as the drip, like I, I, I feel like uh, it's like, well, well, players wear some of the stuff I, just, I can't get with. There's some stuff where I'm just like, really? But it's a, a lot of times it's like when you look good, you feel good. And a lot of times with players, it translates to you look good, you feel good, you play good. Uh, so if they come looking nice, and, and that could be for anything too. Like you may you may get a new pair of shoes or something that you just ordered offline or something off the sneakers app. And then they come through and you're like, oh, oh, these are going to look good. Oh, I got the shirt to go with them perfectly and the pants and all that. And then you put it together and it looks even better than you thought. And you're like, oh, man, you're feeling a little extra confident. You got a little extra step in your walk and whatnot. But I think it's the same way with players. Um, that, that can be just a small thing uh, to help their mental, to help just build them up uh, mentally. But Charlotte, I, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you sending these questions. And yes, JW all day, baby. Speaking of looks, maybe a new look. Next question came from my guy, Evan. He said, hey, Graven, uh, Nyan here. Hope you and the family are doing well and prospering. In the midst of off-season preparation, possible signings, and speculations about what our team will be this year, I thought to ask you and other team keep a clean family something a little less serious. Okay, I appreciate that, man. He said, literally, it seems like every other team is getting a new uniform. Whether it's a full redesign for a uh, home and away sets or it's a new alternate, I love our look. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't want to change our classic fits. However, it would be nice to see us in something a little different or modern. You know, people have been saying this for years, and Ravens just been like, "Oh no, we 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 good." Now I don't I don't I wouldn't want them to change it to something like ugly now, because some of the stuff, some of the up, the upgrades for some teams, it's like, what is that? Some of them could be super super basic, and sometimes basic is good, but sometimes basic is not so good. Um, but yeah, it all just depends. But anyway, he said Arizona traded they look for something more simple since he added the all white unis last year. Oh yeah, those are fire. Those Bengals all-white jerseys, those are fire. But anyway, he said, Cleveland just got an all-white set as well. Indy just dropped a new alternate today, hence why I'm writing this. ATL got a new set two years ago. Both LA teams had redesigns, and the Bucks are to bring back the creamsicle alternates. Again, I'm not saying we should change our look completely, but I do believe that we could benefit from a fresh new look to go with our promising new system and team. What's your thoughts on this? Uh, thank you for your content always. You definitely hit the point where you're part of a multitude of folks' daily routine, myself included, and you're very appreciated. P peace and blessings and hashtag... Team, keep it clean. Appreciate that, Naya. Thank you, man. Uh, and thank you for watching, especially that you got you got to have a little bit of crazy in you to watch us every day. Well, yeah, yeah. You got to be a little bit crazy, but I, I appreciate you being crazy. But um, I wouldn't mind. I, I I certainly wouldn't mind. I mean, I already love the uh the all black uniforms. Um, I, I I like those a lot. I like when they mix it up a bit. Even if they, when they did a little ugly uniforms, a little mustard paint uniforms. Um, I was like, okay, cool. I, I I do like to switch up from time to time. It's nice to see something new. Um, but for the Ravens, I, I I just I don't expect them to really make any like big significant changes, anything like that, when it comes to the uniforms. Um, 
even a throwback like i mean they got the whole little legal battle that they would have to clear with the guy who created designed the original logo they would have to i guess they had to cut that check for him if they wanted to use those as throwbacks but i don't think that's happening so we'll see we'll see i feel like with ravens they can run from some stuff for just for so long but they gotta update and upgrade uh soon because i feel like for the longest uh, they were upgrading from really upgrading the wide receiver room. I mean, they've been running for that for years, but they finally did it. For the longest, I feel like the Ravens were almost running from them international games because the last one that happened, I think, in I want to say 2017, I think, something like that. But it was a while, it was a while back. But now we playing this year, and I think week six against the Titans. So they seem like they've been running from this this uh, jersey change for a long time too. Maybe this will be the year. Next question came from my guy, Mark. He said, Angry Raven, hope you and the family are doing well. Quick question here. Do you think the return of Michael Pierce is being underestimated? Keep up the hard work, brother. Love the videos and positive community you've helped create. Appreciate that, Mark. And yes, thank you for bringing that up. Because I'm somebody, just about like 97% of the time when we're talking about the defensive line, I always forget that we have Michael Pierce. So yes, 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 yes. Because that boy can play. But his thing has been health. So if he could stay healthy this year, that will, obviously if everybody could stay healthy this year, um, it sucks because we just we've already been getting reports of players going down, non-contact injuries out for the season. Uh, Naeem Hines from the Bills, um, C.J. Gardner uh, from the Lions, I want to say, who used to play for the Eagles, he went down with a non-contact, so it's, it's starting up already. So hopefully it can stop for just, not even just the Ravens, but just the whole league, and nobody else will get hurt at all. But you know how the NFL goes. It's a unfortunate part of the business with them injuries, man. Um, but yes, I, I do believe Michael Pierce is being severely underestimated um by myself because again like i said i forget because again he ain't really played last year he played for like some of one game and that was it i think or did he play a couple of games no i think he only played one game but either way he ain't played that much last year so he, he for me he was kind of like an afterthought and whenever i think about the defensive line i will always think justin matabike and broderick washington and travis jones and that's it I, I always forget about Michael Pierce, so having him back will be really, really nice for Ravens. Next question, well, he said, not a question, but well, it came from my guy Terrence. He said, Angry Raven, just wanted to let you know that I think what you've done in the Ravens community has been life-changing. you provided a community where fans can gather and discuss our favorite team with people just as passionate about the team as we are. Uh, you provide insight and perspective on aspects of the game that we may not have considered previously and provide coverage when the season is over and things slow down. Uh, in so many ways, you help us all keep going. Being a part of this family has been such a gift. This channel is not only the best Ravens channel, it's the best small sports media coverage channel on YouTube. After games, I always search for reaction videos from both Ravens and the opposing teams to bask in their sorrows. <laughs> I mean, well, except when Ravens lose, and well, yeah, this is sorrows. Fun. But anyway, then the one thing I always notice is that the quality and vibe of their videos just don't quite match what you offer. I know you don't like talking yourself up, but trust me, you're kind of nice with it. Please keep your head up. Keep doing what you do. Uh, you're going to get yours soon. Thank you. Oh, Terrence, I, I appreciate this a lot. This is um, this is special. And uh, yeah, I appreciate this, man. Um, that's all it is. We, we don't got no like secret knowledge, anything like that. We a fan just like most of us saw. Uh, we ain't got no secret plugs, anything, no connects, anything like that. Um, we are, uh, you know how like you got NFL insiders, we are an NFL outsider cause we ain't got no connects, no plugs or none of that stuff. Um, but I appreciate this man cause that's, that's what the goal is, man. And that's what it was, what it still is. Uh, just to come on here and have some fun. Um, have a good time. Talk about whatever it is going on. We have learned so much from y'all. Um, and just to try to just help people enjoy stuff even more. Because people already enjoy football, but when you get to talk about it after the fact, like, because it's one thing if you just go through the week, go through your work week and whatnot, it's like, oh, got to go to work, got to do this, got to do that, and the third, take care of this, that, and all that. That could be stressful. But um, then you look forward to, to when you get to watch the game and whatnot. Yeah, so you watch the game, the game is like three and a half hours. Like, all right, this is fun. Then it's over. So you're like, oh, okay. And not to say that you don't have anything else to look forward to in life, which you definitely do. There's plenty more things to look forward to in life than football. But when it comes to football, this is just, it, it just adds a little extra bonus for all of us. 
because it helps me. It helps the time with me. It helps the time. I hopefully, hopefully with y'all too. But it, and it's it's a fun way of doing it. Um, and again, it's something that's everybody's welcome to. It's family friendly. We ain't on here cursing and all that and da da da. da and I mean, no offense to the channels that do, but that's just not us. We wanted something that would welcome everybody. Everybody could come through. Everybody could watch a video and stuff. Everybody could have a good time. Because, again, football is entertainment. It's, 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 it's entertainment. It's a business. It's, it's, it's fun. So it should be kept at that. But, um, yeah, it's fun to talk about. It's fun to watch it. It's fun to, to talk about what you think is going to happen, what you think should have happened, what you think could have happened, the, the ifs, the buts, the wins, the what, the, the, all that good stuff. It's fun, man, and, and and y'all make it that much more fun, so I appreciate y'all. Positionless players. Next question came from my guy Jordan. He said, I think the Ravens aren't signing an edge until right before the season, if they even do, because they will use certain packages where they will put Simpson, Harrison, and Ross on the outside to give David away and Bowser a break to switch it up. All three of the inside linebackers have had snaps at the outside either in season, Harrison, preseason, Ross, or in college, Simpson. Just a thought. That's a good thought. You you might be a little defensive coordinator on the low, but um, that could be something that they could do. You know, Ray, Ravens like doing some crazy stuff, man. They like doing some crazy stuff. They'll, they'll have Michael Pierce dropping back in the coverage, but they, they will do some crazy stuff. So what you're saying is not far-fetched at all, Jordan. Zay, Y receiver one. Next question came from my guy, Jalen. He said, with all the rave over Zay Flowers, is it crazy to say that he could end up being the Ravens wide receiver one by the end of the season? With that being said, OBJ is a veteran superstar wide receiver. Could OBJ and Zay end up pushing Rashad Bateman down to wide receiver three over the duration of the season. Anything's possible. A anything is possible. Uh, Ravens didn't draft him in the first round <laughs> to be a slot guy for the future. Uh, they drafted him in the first round to be an impact guy right here, right now, right away, and for the future. So when you think about Zay Flowers becoming their wide receiver one, it's not far-fetched at all. Last line of defense. Next question came from my guy D3. It said, hello, Engraven and team. Keep it clean. Hope all is well with you and the family. I have two questions for you and the crew. Number one, from a warfare standpoint, knowing your enemy before engaging is a necessity. With that being said, why is the Bengals defense being ignored after they've lost both starting safeties? They might not be able to stop anyone on the back end this year. Oh, yeah. Jesse Bates and um, uh, I know they both went to the NFC. I think the other one went to the uh, the Panthers. Bates went, Bates went to the Falcons, I think, and the other one went to the Panthers. I cannot. Is it Mike? Is it Hilton? Is it Hilton? I, I think. Anyway, um, that's a good point. That's a good point. So I'm not sure. I don't recall what they did there at the safety position. I know they drafted Dax Hill last year, but I don't know what else they did there. So that, that'll be something to watch out for this year for sure. He said, number two, is it safe to say that the Ravens have the best defense in the conference? And should be the favorites to win it, barring any injuries. The best defense in the conference? I don't think it's safe to say that yet. We got to see what that secondary looking like and that pass rush looking like this year. Like, the defense was nice last year, especially against the bad quarterbacks. But the defense was... <laughs> We're going to see. We're going to see. They they got to show it. On paper, they look straight. But um, we, we got to see it because there's a lot of unknown right now. Uh, so they, they got a lot to work through as far as the pass rush and whatnot. We'll see what happens with that. But I can't call them the best defense right here, right now, because it's just it's, it's, it's so many unknown that with the Ravens. He said, again, thank you for all the content, time, and effort and dedication to keep us informed. Universal Law states that if you want something, you have to give it first. I speak life and light into your career. ESPN had major layoffs to make room for you. Congratulations in advance. <laughs> No, we ain't laughing at the layoffs now. I'm just laughing at what, what he said because I know layoffs are uh, speaking from experience. It's tough, but um, it can, uh, like, it's, it's cr you, you just never know what could happen. You never know what could happen. Had I not ever been laid off from my job that I was at, this probably would not be going on like it's going on right now. And I, again, we ain't got no big channel or nothing like that. But that I would have never had that push to like really go for it, cause I was I would not cause I got a wife, a kid, and how old was Carter back then? I mean, regardless of how old he was, that's my responsibility. Both of them, my responsibility, and myself too. So to take care of my, my family, that's my responsibility. So I like look, it sounds great. You hear about it in the movies and stuff. You hear some different people take that leap. But I wasn't about to walk away from no job with like, hey, that's why that's why I understand Lamar. I wasn't about to walk away from no job with guaranteed money. Guaranteed money, man. I wasn't about to walk away from that to go, oh, let, let me chase my dream. Let me let me go for this. Let me just take this leap of faith. No. Are you crazy? No, I, I wouldn't do that. But <laughs> when you get laid off, hey, you ain't got no choice but to go for it. Uh, especially when you applying to jobs. And stuff ain't shaking like that. But um, it I, I am very, very grateful 
super super grateful how everything worked out uh in the long run um it's been a lot of work it still is a lot of work but super appreciative that's why i appreciate all of y'all so much because y'all help all of this a lot more than you realize next question came from my boy kevin b he said alfonso graham man hey engraving hope all is well i've been meaning to send this for a while so the steelers picked up an undrafted free agent running back alfonso graham back in may if you don't know him he's a baltimore kid went to the same high school as tavon austin dunbar high then stayed home and went to morgan state college i've had the honor to have watched him grow just like i did with tavon uh don't know if he'll make the team but he's a great player, man. He was a top running back in the MEAC, uh, rushing for over 1,100 yards and averaged over 100 a game. Uh, if he makes a cut, I'm rooting for him, but not for the Steelers. He's a good kid, and I wish him well. There'll be some more kids coming uh, coming up from Baltimore out of Mervo High School. Peace and blessings, my friend. Hey, I appreciate this, man. I, I, I appreciate this because um, this is special. When you get to, to watch somebody's success, man, you get to watch somebody that you've known or, or even that you know about and you see them, you may see their potential from a young age and then you just watch them grow and watch them reach that potential. And now like somebody that you watch, somebody that you've known uh, from Dunbar High, now, now he's in the league. He's in it like that's crazy. That's crazy when you think about it, especially knowing that there's only one percent of people in the world that make it to the league so so shout out to my i do i do hope he does well especially for you because that that'll be super cool just seeing somebody that you it's, it's always nice when you see people that you know and they do well it, it's nice to see other people do well it's nice to see other people do big things uh because you appreciate it and, and you're genuinely happy for them. and the last question on this episode this is the last episode that we're recording before training camp starts i mean i'm recording this on the 24th you may see it on the 24th you probably see it on the 25th but you may see it on the 24th but you'll see it when you see it anyway Last question on this episode. So these are the last questions before training camp is official. Next questions that we get, it'll be while training camp is official, while things are going. So I love y'all and I appreciate y'all's questions. I appreciate everything. I appreciate this off season. I appreciate everybody sending questions of this off season. Thank you for questions from subscribers. Thank you for it always being fun and engaging, always showing respect to other people's questions too. Uh, always showing respect to other people's answers. I appreciate y'all, man. We headed into the season now. The off season is over. We done made it, y'all. So this is the last. This is the last question of the off season. This is it, and it came from my guy Michael. He said, "Morning and many blessings to you and your family." While watching your video this morning, he sent this on July twenty first. I don't know what video it was because it would be a million videos. But anyway, he said, "While watching your video this morning, I have two questions. What are your thoughts on the praise of Justin Herbert over Lamar, and what game this season do you believe will be a breakout game to let the NFL know we are serious?" Well, to that second question, I say week one. Put it all out there week one, man. R run it up. Run it up on week one. Have a Dolphins-like, uh, 2019 Dolphins-like game, not last year. Um, but have, have, have that type of game where you just run it up. I don't care if it's no rookie. I know Ravens don't care if it's no rookie quarterback that they're going against. Run it up, man. Straight up. Run it up and have that defense hold it down and just go off. Take off early, man. I ain't worried about no old. I ain't worried about no peaking too early. No. Go off. Go off. Do your thing. Um, try to get acclimated. They had that offense. Try to have them running like running full speed week one and like really go getting at them Texans, man. Um, and as far as your first question, uh, my thoughts on the praise of Justin Herbert over Lamar. I, I think that's something that a lot of uh, NFL people really want because Justin Herbert is more of a typical uh, quarterback he's more of uh, the quarterback that has the look that people go for the personality that most people go for um he's what a lot of people tend to expect in a quarterback uh and Lamar is not uh I think that's a big part of it I think people really uh want they really want Justin Herbert to be successful and I mean Justin Herbert is nice he's nice um but I think people's base they base the Justin Herbert praise over Lamar off of expectations rather than results. And I think that's where uh, another part of the issue lies. Like if somebody like Justin Herbert better than Lamar, okay, great. Um, but I always like hearing people's why. What's the reasoning? What, what, what's your thought process behind it? And hey, we respect it. Even if we don't always agree with what somebody may say, we respect it. But I think that's what it is. It's, it's them basing it off of expectations instead of results. Yeah, this feels like a dream.